No, I'm, I'm not disappointed. We had a rather broad uh, span. And of course, uh, you have to talk to investor and market it market. And uh, we had a l rather big issue that we wanted to do. So I think it, it, in the end, it, uh, we found a good level. And I think also very good that we leave uh, headroom for our new shareholders. And I uh, think. Uh, we, we have with this price uh, allowed that to, to happen. Let's see what, what happens after the bell rings today. I know there's been some market speculation that it is the Chinese ownership that has uh, made investors reluctant. Do you think there's anything to that at all? Or does it say something about the market not being confident about your EV only strategy? You, you uh, never know. I think the market is very confident in our uh, uh, electric-only future. Of course, now China is really a hot subject. I mean, there is more and more trade tension. There is technology tensions between uh, West and China. I think that is really something that's valid for uh, everybody selling cars in China or. Uh, so I, I don't think it's really related to the ownership. So I think it's a bit unfair to to use uh, our Chinese ownership in any way when it comes to to value or our future. Okay, it's uh, Karen jumping in. I want to ask you about the chip shortage because we've seen a lot of report cards cross this week from auto companies and effectively uh, investors have been a little bit disappointed about how long it's going to take to clean up some of this a shortage we're seeing in semiconductors. Do you think we're still seeing a phase of discounting in share prices because of those concerns which has been potentially an impact for your stock too? No, I, I think we have here two things. As so semiconductor is, is a capacity issue if we talk about our growth rate going forward. I mean, there is uh, everybody wants to buy semiconductors right now. But in third quarter, we really saw a, uh, a really drop uh, because there were factories in Far East were closed down. So we lost the key components for our cars. So I mean, we lost around 50,000 cars in our production. I don't think that is uh, really a long-term factor that should be counted in when, when we talk about the value of our company going forward. I think it's rather short-term, even though, of course, we realistically have to, to be count with some kind of disturbance as, uh, also going forward. But uh, fourth quarter is better than third quarter, and I see a positive trend here. Haka, let me also ask you about the voting rights because uh, we've been talking about a lot of technology companies on this channel and the pushback around voting rights and in some ways your company sort of crossed over to the tech sphere a little bit as well with the online selling of the cars. What did you make of the pushback? Do you think there's a very clear messaging now from shareholders that if you own a stock that you deserve the same voting rights as any uh, existing or major shareholder if they're a founder or someone else who's bought into the business? No, I, I think we now, with the reclassification of our share, we, we established a very sound principle that one share should represent one vote. And I, I think that is really the best principle right now. And if you're inviting new investors, I think you should also give them the voting powers. I, I'm very glad that we did, uh, our owner did this change. It was beneficial for the whole process. And can I ask you, uh, obviously we, we've got um, Joe Biden now here in Europe for, for the COP meeting, but obviously there are still questions, I think, around the trade relationship with China and unfortunately how you have become collateral damage in that sense. Do you think we're heading into a, a brighter or a worse patch for, for relations? Uh, very difficult to do any prediction. I mean, when it comes to trade restriction and the level of duties between U.S. and, and China, we have, since a couple of years now, we are on a very high level. So hopefully that can improve. But uh, really right now, I must say, I don't see any signs really of an improvement. But uh, on the other hand, also, I don't think uh, we see any signs of, of things getting worse. So, but it's, I mean, 
it's very difficult to, to, to judge this. When we look into our business in China, it runs uh, very good and, and we are growing and then we are back after the pandemic and uh, uh, I think we see uh, no problem with that. But we cannot export cars out of China anymore to the US or, or Europe. That's uh, difficult. So we have to produce much more where we sell our cars in the future. Mm. So in that way, globalization is, is a bit uh, scaled back. Hi, I'm Giovanna Bersecci and thank you for watching. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thank you for watching.